Here's a way of praying, and I'll break it down for you. Pray then in this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, if you break down this prayer, it's interesting how it starts. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The first part of the prayer is focusing on who God is. That he and God will be done. We look forward to heaven, but ultimately thy will be done. So before any petition of any kind, any request of the Prayer is there to teach you the will of God, not for you to teach God your will. And a lot of people confuse that. You read things like that. Prayer is there to teach you the the really wanted in a proper factory concept of I want it and I want it now, Daddy. And that's not what prayer is. It all is centered on God's will. Imagine it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When you go to the grocery store and you see the children with their parents. And the children are asking every every aisle going up and down the aisle pointing at what they want. I want this sugar cereal. I want that snack. I want these chips. I want that candy bar. The parent is there to guide them, to re-center and re-guide them to understand what they really need. No, honey, they're going to get these food because they're good food. And prayer is similar. It's like a child who may ask for everything, even things that you think are good and that will be helpful to help with someone. Whatever it might be, more money, whatever it might be. But if God sees different in a bigger plan, it won't come in, it won't come to be because you prayed it. And going through the entirety of those scriptures, you will see that that's really what it comes down to. It comes down to the will of God, not the demand or the will of man. Cheryl, welcome to Jesus Christ Show. Happy birthday. Well, thank you. Thank um, you. My, my cat had died um, two weeks ago, and I was wondering if, cats, if animals have souls. Did mm -hmm. they go to heaven? Animals uh, do not have souls because so they're humans have souls. So what you say, you, you know, theologically, you say you, you, you have a soul. If you imagine it this way, uh, I would have had to have come and died on the cross as, you know, as a dog, as a cat, as a, all of these things to cover um, all of those effects. Animals are yeah. instinctual. They don't deal with more. They, they react instinctually based on self-preservation and things like that. And not just an animal like more. So it's a different situation. So there are some theologians that would say, um, no, cat, there's no, you know, cats and dogs in heaven. But this doesn't necessarily say that. It doesn't say that, that animals are redeemed through the blood of Christ, but it doesn't say anything about the, the heaven being absent uh, of animals. So um, one could say theologically that your animal could be in heaven, but not in the same way that you would go to heaven based on your relationship uh, with God. So um, don't give up hope and just know and trust this, that this is very clear that there will be no tears in heaven. And there's, there's not going to be any that, that feeling of loss or absence or any of those things. So be confident that there, there's no reason to think that, that an animal couldn't be there. But also if uh, someone or an animal is missing, it's not like you'd be dis disappointed that, yeah, it's really great to be in the presence of God, but I wish someone was going to be That's just not the way uh, that it works. Uh, you're going to be standing in the presence of the glory of God. You will be fun. You will be absolutely 
to the site show on man. Your head is out. How do you know if you get Sunday as I know you have to do this Sunday? Answering your questions and talking about the truth between you and me. And of course the afterlife. I encourage you to be bold and brave and go to the phone with your theology question and life situation question. Ooh. And you go to the phone with your theology question. That's 800 520 Elliot, welcome to the Jesus Church. Hey, good morning. Uh, I just, I have, I have a question. I have trouble getting rid of the Word of God. Sometimes I go to church and I feel all this emotion and I feel happy. And I just have to go to church and I feel like I'm wasting my time. And I just want to pray for this just a little bit. And I just want to pray for this just a little bit. And I just want to pray for this just a little bit. Well, it's bound to happen. It's depending on you could be in different places. You know, mentally, you can have things on your own. You can see a lot of different things. What are you looking to get out of church? I didn't want to, I didn't want to know about God. I didn't want to know about the Word. I want to live by the Bible. I want to, I want to be happy. Okay, and, and you feel that when a preacher is talking about God, you're not really listening, or what's the problem? I don't know, sometimes I feel like you're trying to get a good message, sometimes I feel like the message is not coming through, and, and I don't know if it's just confusion or the flesh that, that's like away from the Word of God. Well, it's hard, it's easier to read it on your own, or to try and complete scripture can be difficult sometimes, I don't want you to, to beat yourself up, whether you're trying to preach yourself about it, or you're reading it yourself, it's not like it's a super easy book to read. So you, yeah, exactly. When I started reading it, I feel like I'm not grasping anything. I don't know what you're going to do with it. I don't know how to start reading it. I don't know how to start reading it. Well, there's some verses and chapters that I'm going to give you. But I'm going to give you a recommendation. And it's on my website as well. But when I do this, when my producer really loves this, he's got one of these himself. He's given one to his wife. He's given one to his wife. Graphic novel is like uh, it's kind of like a comic book, but uh, it's got a real deeper story than, than just Superman and Shane the Earth. Well, a graphic novel is a style of novel that, that really uses pictures as well as words to move the story on. And there is one called the, the Picture Bible, and often it's given to kids, but I will tell you, it's not a kid's book, it's not a kid's book in the Bible, it's a kid's book. And so the pictures kind of help. Here's the thing. Everybody learns at their own, their own pace. They learn differently. I think it's a real. He's a, he's an artist. He likes to draw and he likes to take. So he tends to just reading empty words that doesn't always work for him. Sometimes it's not that he sees visuals that go along with it and embeds it in his memory. So maybe, maybe if you were to find yourself, uh, you go on Amazon or a local bookstore should have it. It's called the Picture Bible, and it's not word for word. I mean, it's not a study Bible, per se. It's just a way of an idea of what took place. And then you can read along or be in your at church. You can have a better idea of who everybody is or all those things, so you don't get lost. Uh, and let's get, a, let's get a Picture Bible, and you can do that. Right now. And it's like when you read a really big comic book, so it gives you an idea of the people that play in the timeline, I think it's a good place to the scripture. Oh, okay, sounds good, sounds good. I also have another quick question. I don't know if I could ask you a quick question. Sure. Um, is it, is it bad that, um, like, when I, when I listen to God, and I hear the words, and I think it's terrible, and then, and everything goes back to the like, normal, I feel like it's riding away from God, like, it kills me, like, it's it, 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 Elias, I, I don't want you to I don't want you to be away from God just when times are good. So it's not a great thing, but but does it is it some great big thing that separates you from God? No. Most people reach out to God when they need something. And that doesn't mean you love your parents anymore when you reach out to them when they need something. It just is a it's, it's a tool. I do encourage you through reading if you're spending some time or drawing or doing anything, uh, it doesn't have to be just being in church or just reading scripture. If there are anything that you do, turn and do it for God. 
And that's an easier way to kind of allow God to be a part of every segment of your life and you're doing without it being in church or in, in scripture or what are you really doing if you're building a car built it for God. If you're, you know, working a cat out of your third, work it for God. See, everything that you do, do it with a fair heart and do it for the glory of God. And, and I think that's what God is going to do. Thank you, I appreciate the comments and the advice. Anytime, brother, I appreciate your comments. I'm going to. So, there's a kind of attitude, and uh, it, it permeates the entirety of Christianity, that there is some sort of big thing that you need to do to please God. And I always say, Rick, believe. You know, if you, want, if you love your parents, you want to do something for them, break their leave. Just be human. Be normal. Do stuff. Because that's why God has you here. Get stuff done. To do stuff. To learn things. To adapt. To explore. And it's okay to do those things. And you'd be surprised how many times you are really connecting with God when you're not just doing a physical prayer or you're reading scripture or you're in a, uh, a church. You're still connecting with God. God is everywhere. And what you want to do is you want to see Him and you want to make note of Him and thank Him for just the tiniest of things. Be connected to Him, to him for the littlest of things. Every day in every way. And that's all we want. And then when something big comes along you got to talk to Him, there's no problem. But He really isn't a God of checks and balances in that sense. And He loves you and He misses you and He wants to see you. Really, that's simple. Debbie, welcome to the Jesus Christ Show. Good morning. Hi. Um, I have a question. I am a Christian. Okay. And uh, I was pre for cremation versus being uh, buried in a box. Okay. And I would feel more comfortable if I had a reference to um, sympathy to make me feel more at peace that cremation isn't in any way negating my past. To the afterlife? Well, it's not like you're going to find a specific uh, verse about cremation. There's just not. And there are there are things that are taught there in the Old Testament, people are burned to death, things like that. If you're worried about whether it's an anti Christian thing, it's not. Our Jewish yeah. brothers and sisters have concerns because they, they interpret a few of the what we refer to as Old Testament um, verses. They think, oh, well, that's a problem. However, in the Christian theology, the way uh, God raises the dead and all of that practice, there's no change. And I will give you this um, for logic and reason that may stick with you. And that is that not to be ugly or crass, but the process that's taking place in a pine box is the same as cremation, just over a longer period of time. So whatever is in the box, the organic uh, the person that's left over, um, is breaking down, getting simpler, and will go and become basically ash on its own over hundreds of years. But in, in this process, all you're doing is speeding that up. It will not impede anything dealing with heaven, dealing with God, uh, dealing with you. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Nothing, no worries whatsoever. God will be able to find you. You won't be lost. And he'll still be able to put you all back together. Um, all of those things. A lot of people freak out and go, well, how's he going to know? Well, that's what he made you from in the first place. It'll be fun. No trouble. So there's uh, there's nothing biblical uh, for the Christian that says you can't be cremated. Not one thing. Oh, bless you. So um, if that's bless how you want to go. It rolls around in our heads sometimes. We have to make decisions ahead of time. And I listen for the topic, but it's... But I don't hear somebody specifically get it clear cut like you just did. No, you got it's a great question. Go in peace and don't worry about it. And if that's what you choose to do, um, be peaceful with it. It doesn't bother God one bit. You are listening to the Jesus Christ Show. To ask your question, dial 800 520 When your brain gently numbs thinking of snowflakes and sugar plums, KFI is keeping track of who's naughty, who's nice, and everything else. 
going on in the world. KSI. KOSC HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live from everywhere on the Iron Radio app. Stabbing at a concert, I'm Layla Muhammad, live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. A music festival in Exposition Park had to be shut down early after a rapper was stabbed during a fight backstage. TMZ is reporting this morning rapper Draco, Draco the Ruler was the one who was stabbed at the Once Upon a Time in L.A. Music Festival at the Bank of California Stadium and that he has died. The stabbing happened around 8.30 last night. Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Ice Cube, and the Isley Brothers were among the featured artists at the festival. West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he can't vote for President Biden's $2 trillion spending bill. A Manchin's vote is needed for the Build Back Better Act to pass through the Senate. Manchin has also always been a key holdout for the legislation, sharing concerns over certain provisions in the economic bill that would expand the nation's social safety net and how it may increase inflation. The NFL is making big changes to its COVID testing for players and staff. The league's chief medical officer says testing will now be smarter and more strategic. Multiple games were postponed last yes, week because of a high number of positive cases for players. players. Under the new policy made with the input of the Players Association, vaccinated players and staff members will only be tested for COVID if they show symptoms. The league says the Omicron variant has produced many more positive cases, but with mild illness or no symptoms at all, and the players test clear from it more quickly when they're vaccinated. Players can be cleared to play in as little as one day after a positive test if they're symptom-free. Ryan Blumen, KFI News. A congressional report has found the Trump administration engaged in deliberate efforts to undermine the U.S. response to the COVID-19 pandemic for political purposes. NBC News reports the House Select Subcommittee investigating the nation's COVID response released its findings Friday. They say the Trump White House overruled public health and testing guidance by the nation's top infectious disease expert and the silence officials wrote Trump's political agenda. This also included unqualified officials promoting a herd immunity strategy that experts warned against and weakening the CDC's COVID testing guidance to obscure how rapidly the virus was spreading across the country. Oregon has a goal to give COVID vaccine booster shots to a million people by the end of January to help slow the spread of the Omicron variant. Governor Kate Brown says the top priority is those long-term care facilities. Really focused on uh, boosting uh, these vulnerable Oregonians that are in assisted living, uh, that are in congregate care, that are in adult foster homes. Teams will spread out across the state to give booster shots to residents of those long-term care facilities. <laughs> Hip-hop artist, rapper, and music producer Tango Kid has died. His son says that he died from colorectal cancer. Tango Kid and his group UPFO are pioneers of early rap from New York City with his such as Roxanne Roxanne from 1984. He was 55 years old. Let's check traffic right now. We do have a problem on the 710. Yeah, the signal alert on the 710 northbound of Del Lamo. It's just the off-ramp is taken away. That's what the signal is all about. So you can't use the off-ramp, Del Lamo off-ramp on the 710 uh, northbound. But the main line of the freeway remains open. I don't see much of a backup there. A separate issue on the 710 southbound right by the 91. That collision confined to the two left lanes. It took quite a while, but that wreck finally cleared on the Santa Ana Freeway. It was a crash with two overturned vehicles, North 5 right by the 91. Both have been uprighted, cleared from the freeway, and you're looking pretty good coming up from Anaheim into Buena Park now on the Santa Ana Freeway northbound. And one last plug to that earlier issue in the high desert, 15 northbound right by Ranchero Road in Hesperia. That crash has cleared from lanes. The earlier backup thinned out very quickly. KFI in the Sky helps get you there faster. I'm Bill Thomas. What's all the buzz about nasal irrigation and navage, navage, navage? And should I try it? Here's the science. Airborne germs invade through your nose. It's the body's air filter for trapping allergens and viruses. When your nose gets clogged, it's less effective and germs multiply. Eventually, your immune system can get overwhelmed and you get sick. Nasal irrigation is an effective, all-natural way to clean your nose. It's not a drug. It's more like plumbing. Saline goes in one nostril, around the back of the nose, and out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and germs. I'm Martin Hope, and I invented Navage to make cleaning your nose easy. It's the world's only nose cleaner with powered suction. Navage pulls out the bad stuff so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and feel healthier. At Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Target, Bed Bath, and Walmart. Or go to Navage.com for a free gift with purchase. Over 2 million souls. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. He knows healthy life. Ready to stream on your old car? Then download the Roto app. That's R-O-D-O. Roto will buy your car and give you the cash you need to buy your next car today. You don't even need to leave your house. 